What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make a punk flyer. Dread Labs. All right, so someone reached out to me on Instagram and asked me how to do this and I just so happened to have this punk flyer book by Masala Noir laying around which contains all of kinds of punk flyers as you can, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I thought let's just uh, see if we can do some effects with it, see how we can create that similar like printed vibe uh, in just black and white. So yeah, I whipped up this like quick little uh, proposal thing. Basically what I did here was uh, I worked with a stencil font, which is a stencil STD bolt, which makes up the punk fill. Uh, then Alfredo Heavy for the title here, which kind of resembles the uh, stencil here because the text is a little bit smaller. I didn't want to have these like stencil cuts in there. Then I ripped up a punk band name generator and I came up with these names. So they're not real names, I think at least. I had a font which is called uh, Plubber in time smooth. This is on Creative Cloud's uh, Adobe fonts. Uh, so basically what it was this, I outlined the font. I went to object, compound path make. I'll give it a black fill again. So we'll see what we're doing. And then I'm gonna go to object path, offset path. Uh, basically offset this path and do that one more time. And in our layer menu, uh, you have three paths here. You gotta select the middle one and the bottom one. You go to the Pathfinder menu and you punch this one out, uh, so you can get get kind of that like that extra outlined uh, part around the font here. Yeah, then I just made a rectangle with a uh, width profile uh, that was like this one, and I changed that around a little bit with the width tool. Uh, so if you press Shift W on your uh, keyboard, you can actually play around with the width here of the lines. Uh, just to have a little bit of variation in there, you know, because it's a punk flyer, these things shouldn't be like super straight and uh, organized. I did the same with this little line here. Uh, so yeah, basically just quickly put this together so we have something to work with in the tutorial and we can move on to creating some effects that make this punk flyer look a little bit more legit. So before we export this to Photoshop, uh, there's one more thing I wanted to do and that's apply a roughen effect on this as you can see here. So the way we want to do that is, let's bring up our original one here. Uh, make sure that all of your fonts are outlined. So I'm going to just select all of these here. And right mouse click and click on create outlines. You don't have to worry about the shapes with the strokes. Uh, I'm just going to leave them. Uh, but I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to effect, distort and transform and roughen. And probably something weird like this shows up. Uh, so we're going to just uh, put the size to absolute so we can have a little bit more of control over it because it doesn't have to be that drastic. I think a size of like two is fine for me and I'm going to increase the detail. So maybe like to 40 an inch, maybe a little bit less. And let's increase this to, I think around three. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, this roughens up your shapes pretty, uh, pretty much. I think it's, yeah, this is a little bit too much as you can see down here. Uh, you can also do these manually, of course. So let's select all of them again. We'll go to appearance and click on the roughen again. Uh, you also want to make sure that the points are smooth. This will uh, change it up a lot. Let's make this a little bit smaller again. Maybe to 1 and increase the detail to 40. Well, let's leave that 30 actually. Yeah, okay, this should be fine. Now the edges are just a little bit more roughened up. Uh, let's select everything here and then go to expand appearance. So all of this is just uh, outlined now. Uh, the effect is applied. Uh, so we'll select all of this and paste it into Photoshop. There we go. Uh, and I want to have like a main image here. Uh, so I downloaded the photo from uh, Unsplash that I wanted to uh, use. I think it's this one. Let's drag it in. Uh, you can find this photo for free by Mike Vaughn on Unsplash. And let's place it where we want. Let's see. Maybe we want to have two people here. We'll use another photo by Micron. Kind of like right here. And I'm going to really roughly mask her, her out so she isn't in the way of the other model here. Like this. And since these photos are kind of like the same in terms of lighting and contrast and brightness, I'm just going to group them together and we can adjust them at the same time. So for all these photos. We'll apply a threshold effect on it and here we can kind of see what we want to delete now um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a mask to our group here 
and I'm just gonna brush away things that I don't want. But uh, what I'm gonna do first is click on the mode here in the top menu of the brush, and I'm gonna click on dissolve. And as I like, kind of like brush stuff away, as you can see, it's getting like a little rough and noisy, and that's what I'm like going for here. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll see where to like mask stuff out and where not. And I'll just fast forward until I'm finished. Right, um, and as you can see, I haven't been really thorough with this, and that's what I kind of like about these punk flyers. You know, you don't have to be like super detailed and thorough. It makes it kind of like um, I think that's what makes a punk flyer work. So it might have come to your attention that the color here isn't really like the same color as uh, the true black. So let's go with a color overlay here and we're good to go. All right, so uh, now that all of this is finished, I think what we need to do here is flatten it all up. So we'll select all the layers, click on convert to smart object and we'll call this poster. So now we're gonna press D on our keyboard. So we have the default colors here, black and white. Go to filter, filter gallery. And as you can see, I kind of already uh, played around with this before the tutorial, uh, but I'll briefly go over what I did here. Uh, so the first thing that I did was like uh, I used these spray strokes, and I'll zoom in here so you can see a little bit from what this effect does. So the spray strokes give these kind of like diagonal strokes over this, and you can basically choose which one you, which direction you want, uh, maybe like horizontal. Uh, I'll just go with uh, right diagonal. You can uh, adjust the spray radius to make it a little bit bigger if you want that. That will lose your a little bit of detail as you can see here. Um, and you can increase the length and that's basically how drastic these uh, are. But yeah, I this is just to roughen it up just a little bit more. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit more smooth once we apply the second filter. So if you don't know how to do this, you can actually stack these filters together. Uh, so basically here is a plus uh, icon and it will uh, give you a new uh, effect layer. I'm just going to use the stamp here. Uh, and with the stamp, I'm going to just decrease the smoothness all together and see where the light dark balance uh, should be. Uh, okay, so this is without the filters and this is with the filters. It just gives you that little extra, yeah, grunginess, I guess. Uh, and it fixes these like little details that we just did with the dissolve brush. All right, so now that we have this, uh, I'm kind of content uh, with what we have so far. Uh, and if you want to, you can actually use uh, some displacement maps to even distort it a little bit further. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but there's a ton of videos on my channel uh, where I talk about displacement maps and I demonstrate them. So if you want to learn more about those, I have a video on that on my channel. Anyway, so the last thing that I want to do is simulate kind of like a stamp effect, like an actual stamp effect, you know, with a rubber stamp. So I don't really have a rubber stamp or an ink texture that I can use to simulate this. So the way I'm gonna try to do it is find like a grunge texture of a wall, something like this maybe. Uh, and let's just bring that in. Scale it up a little bit. And what I actually wanna do is I wanna um, hold shift and let's make this a little bit bigger. And I wanna make it a little more flat as you can see. And now that we zoom in, yeah, the, you know that the, the grunginess is kind of like going in this direction now, like horizontally. Now I want to decrease the color, so remove the saturation uh, by pressing Command U. That will bring up the U saturation menu, and by pressing Command L, it'll bring up the levels menu, and we'll make this like super contrasty. And we'll make sure that we have a good amount of grunge, like this. Uh, maybe even like scaled up a little bit, so this darker part is gone. All right, so I'm liking this. So if you want to go one step further, you can go to filter gallery once more, and you can actually use the stamp effect here to simulate those uh, kind of like uh, specs, I guess. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to because you lose a little bit of detail. But yeah, that's something that you can do if you want that. Okay, so with, we'll make this invisible for a second. And what I want to do with the poster here is I want to go and make this a black layer exclusively. And I'm going to do that by double clicking and bringing in this slider. And as you can see, all the white is transparent now. And this works a lot, uh, really well with only like black and white pictures. So pretty nice method to uh, making this transparent. And now I just want to make a smart object from uh, out of this. And basically if we press command and press the thumbnail and if we select it, we only uh, select the black parts, which is really nice. All right, so what I would like to do now is give this a white color overlay and we'll work with an inner uh, shadow. And basically play with this for a little bit. I will try to 
uh, take as much of the shadow in like this you know like it's almost gone here on the text but the models here and the bigger text uh, will leave a lot of white and that's where our texture comes in we will group this poster clip this to the group and we'll put the texture to multiply and as you can see the grunge is starting to apply and this is where we start playing with the levels and the inner shadow here so I want to make this a little bit darker so I want to bring in the darker uh, level part a little bit more a bit like this really like almost to get that constant to like a threshold filter where it's either black or white but I still want to leave it a little bit in between you know so this is basically just a trial and error. Uh, now I think I am content with the inner shadow. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe like lower the choke a little bit and decrease these. And maybe like we'll uh, use the uh, glass contour just like a regular, uh, like a diagonal instead of like this uh, this glass contour. Now I want to keep the size around 30 pixels. I think maybe like up the choke a little bit and then we'll lower the size like this and last but not least we'll just add a white background all right there we have it uh, this is the final result uh, so if you want to you can obviously like use paper textures on this um, maybe like recolor it or something I'm not gonna do that in this video um, I want to leave this uh, up to you uh, to experiment with but this was very fun uh, I haven't really like experimented with the filter gallery that much so yeah, this, this has been pretty cool. Uh, I hope you learned something today or at least feel inspired. Uh, so in the last part of this video, I want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. So if you don't know, if you become a Dreadlabs patron, uh, you'll get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, including this one. You get a 15% discount to the Dreadlabs web store, as well as a cool Discord role and an exclusive channel. Uh, so if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can join us on Discord. And with all of that out of the way, I just want to thank you for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs, tuning out. See you in the next video.